<laughs> so hi, Jürgen, uh, and um, thank you for uh, accepting my invitation to record this small interview for our Transitional Justice blog with Kawa Logan. So uh, maybe to contextualize a bit, Jürgen Vatne uh, Freides is actually a managing director of Utoya, uh, the island and the memorial center. And uh, we are today in Paris uh, where we just attended the uh, EU commemoration for victims of terrorism. It's an event that has been uh, organized over the last 15 years, actually this is the 16th year uh, of the, the event. And Jürgen was one, uh, one of the speakers. So can you maybe uh, tell us something uh, more about the Taya itself, its history, um, how important it was to memorialize events that happened recently? Sure. Um, so to start off, it's, I think it's to understand the choices we made after the terrorist attack. It's also a bit uh, crucial to understand a bit of its history before, because Utah has been a unique place for seven years uh, for young people to come to learn uh, to learn about democracy, learn about uh, to standing up basically for the values they believe in. So it's uh, it's first and foremost known as the place where this social democratic youth organization have their annual camps. There's still other organizations uh, using it. But for the last 70 years, <coughs> it's been thousands of young people coming to, to get insight into what, how the, the democracy, how politics works, and, uh, and uh, basically uh, coming there to try to change the world for the better. That is it. Um, and how this uh, change after the attacks in Utoya, did it change in some, some way? I think for, for the Labour Youth Organization, yes. Utah became more important than it used to be. Um, for Norway, it became also a symbol of, uh, we don't have traditions, we don't have experiences of dealing with mass murder and, and uh, terrorist attacks. So also the way we had to deal with Utah was uh, basically how Norway responded. Um, How challenging was to to create this kind of new memorial space and to um, try to understand different kind of meanings uh, that are assigned to it by different kind of groups? Well, first and foremost, it was really difficult because we were not experts. We were amateurs. We um, we were quite young people. Um, but still with a uh, uh, big uh, hope that we needed to do this. We needed, we had to go through uh, our principle of not allowing the terrorist succeeding in what he wanted. Uh, his aim was to kill off an entire generation of youth politician, and his aim was also to shut down the as an arena for a certain a set of values. So for us, it was really important that he will, he shouldn't succeed. He took so much away from so many people, but he shouldn't succeed in his uh, goal of, of shutting down the as a place for for these values. So it was important for us to come back, uh, but we quickly realized, of course, that they, it's easier to say we will come back, we will kill Utah with life once again. It's easier to say than to do it. Because of course you have to uh, honor, you have to take into in, in consideration that it's not only the active participants of the youth organizations, but you have now 69 people killed, all their families, you have the families and the survivors themselves. So how do you kind of how do you find a balance between the needs which is for those uh, that are directly affected, yes. but also the needs for the future, which means new life, new activities, mm -hmm. not allowing uh, it uh, to be shut down. And how challenging was this process of memorialization in Utoya? Because uh, the, you said in today's speech that um, the plans to commemorate and memorialize the events in Utoya uh, came too early. So in two, September 2012, that is a bit over a year after the attack, <clears throat> and it was also very near, uh, just after the court case against the perpetrator yeah. ended. Um, so it was uh, the first plans were presented already then, and the time frame will said 
we will be back already in the next year. Mm -hmm. So fundamentally two years after you passed yes. the events. That was the initial mm -hmm. the time frame. Mm -hmm. um, I think what symbolizes the uh, lack of, of uh, a wish to also to confront and to be able to uh, take care of also the dark side of history mm -hmm. was the uh, decision that we should tear down, demolish the cafeteria building. So yeah. the cafeteria building uh, has been a logistical hub mm -hmm. in where the meetings took place, where you had your ice cream. <coughs> Toilet. Uh, yes. It was all the logistical uh, things and had been for 70 years. Um, on the 22nd of July, 13 people were shot and killed inside. Many hundreds managed to escape. Um, a lot of people have their histories from the building. Um, and it's also, which is of course important in this manner, it's, it's the only place on the island that after the attack had the physical roots. So the bullet holes in the walls, um, and outside nature basically heals itself. Yes. Life goes on, but yeah. inside uh, time was standing still. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that would change that was mm -hmm. our uh, our uh, decisions. And the first decision was to take away the entire thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and for many that was as, uh, seen as a way of, to be able to come back, you have to erase all the traumatic side. Mm -hmm. Um, and moving basically nothing to remember what happened that mm -hmm. day and leaving nothing to remember those uh, that were affected. Mm -hmm. And that was the lack of balance in the first months. Mm -hmm. But you also uh, did a number of consultations with uh, victims and victims' families around Norway, uh, from what I understand. And what were uh, their ideas concerning memorialization? What they thought about? Uh, what were their plans, their wishes? Uh, concerning memorialization, so what did they want to see in a potential memorial? Well, um, I tend to say that you find the answers in the details. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily going around to family after family after family, mm -hmm. sitting at their home, having a cup of coffee and talking about these difficult issues. It's not necessarily about the big issues of, you know, uh, they come up with a side proposal for a memorial and yes. this and that. But it's about you know their their personal needs. Mm -hmm. um, for example, um, one family, the mother, she wasn't able to go to go to Utah. She really wanted to. She she was it was important for her to see the place that her yes. son was killed. Mm -hmm. uh, but she just couldn't manage. Um, she couldn't manage now, and she didn't know she could manage next year. Mm -hmm. um, on that part of the island where son was killed is a quite steep part down towards mm -hmm. the water um, so we put up a small fence so people wouldn't basically fall off the cliff yeah. um, her wish was that she would see the place as 100% as it was mm -hmm. so authentic authentic yes. so for us to leave out this area of the path just so that she could come mm -hmm. and then afterwards she was fine with having an offensive because it was for her safety. Mm -hmm. Those kind of details. Yeah. Another family is saying, well, the memorial also gives me, it takes one away this kind of more public function of the place where my daughter was killed to have it you know, more centralized. Mm -hmm. This is a place uh, where I can cherish, where I can remember her life, mm -hmm. not just to go to the place to remember her death. So this, uh, these ideas of how, uh, how a memorial could also you know, uh, change uh, feelings, change the way you use the island was yes. important. Another aspect was not necessarily about just the so-called memorial, mm -hmm. but for us it was important that it be narrative was put there and to have a place where we could more take control of the issue. Because what we saw quite early on was that the people came to experience the path, the history of the perpetrators, okay. not the victims. Okay. Have a place. Doctorism as well? Oh. 
a place, you know, where you tell the stories of the victims, yes. take control of the history. Yeah. Uh, so this building uh, yes. doesn't have the history of that game. And also because they speed to take control of this just allowing them to be the perpetrators of the domain in the narrative. But were there also uh, victims, survivors, or uh, family members who um, didn't want a memorial? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. What were their reasons? Um, some said um, you should touch the island, yeah. don't do anything, keep it as a, as a park, as a place more identical as, yeah. as, um, as much as you could to what it looked like in 2011, so yeah. authenticity again. Yeah. Yeah. And they didn't want them more. They had you know, what they needed at home. Those kind of discussions did uh, kind of came off the table quite early on. Mm -hmm. uh, more and more people saying, well, uh, first of all, the majority, and big majority, said, well, we, we want Utah to live. Yes. We want that Utah should be a place for young people once again. Uh, others said, well, we, we just wanted to have it as a if I uh, remember well, um, the, some of the main uh, issues, uh, let's say, that uh, people actually had in relation to Toya was that they were afraid, I think, that um, the island would become sort of a museum. And we'd lose this kind of social function that we actually had before for the youth, especially. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, and also, so you're related to identity, to what this place has been all about. And also, and as I said, this the the failure you know, of, of allowing the terrorists to succeed. So a lot of families, uh, a lot of the survivors, they were really, even though it was hard, it was they were really. Uh, it was important.